Western China, navigating a world racing against time. This is the place I'm too familiar with, but yet there are many things I've never experienced before. With memories disappearing daily and culture going with them, I got to capture this before it's too late. There is bustling markets offering traditional meals cooked by hand. There is history spanning 5,000 years, with over 20 dynasties have came and gone, rising and falling. Mountains and rivers nurture the legends of faith and truth, and all those stories echoing above the clouds. We are in Wuxi County, the river of the wizard, with population over 400,000. And this place was known for making salt, rolling fish, and also for the mysterious hanging coffins. Heading north for about 30 miles, crossing through winding valleys, we'll finally reach the Jinzhuba area, where hanging coffins are most densely distributed. They are just right in front of me in somewhere in the cracks of this high cliff. And the ravine here is very long and wide. The mountains on both sides are very high and steep. As I stand here, look up, I couldn't see those hang coffins very clearly. As I stand right beneath this spectacular cliff, everything else just seems so small. Perched hundreds of feet above the riverbed is one of the greatest mysteries in all of China, the hang coffins of the poor people. There are 24 coffins arranged neatly end to end. These coffins are made entirely of solid wood, roughly crafted with primitive tools, Measure around 1.6 to 2 meters in length and 0.5 meter in weight and height, dating back over 2,000 years. Now I am walking alongside this river named the Daniu River. It's a branch of Yangtze River. The introduction board over there tells that this ravine is about 7 kilometers long with high cliff on both sides and one side wedged in the crack which on my left hand side is a cluster of wooden hang coffins. In total 24 coffins were found here and 21 of which were still placed along the length of this cliff face. The earliest one they found has been sticking out there over 2,000 years. Mm. Hi. Hi. You are so It is said these are the coffins of Wu people, an ancient tribe in southwestern China. They are also the ancestors of Yizhu, an ethnic minority live in Sichuan, Yunnan, and Guizhou province. Pu people mostly lived along this river basin and usually choose the way of burying their dead up in the cliff. That is the hand coffin we see here today. There are also some other well-known hand coffins in China, like the hand coffin of Bo people, located in Sichuan and Yunnan province. And in fact, the Bo people and the Pu people here, they could be traced back to the same ancestors at that time. So just with different names. People made every effort to ensure that the soul could reach its heavenly destination, seeking peace and comfort. They viewed mountains as a stairway to heaven, and hang coffins as a bridge between this world and the next, serving as a connection between the living and those passed away. They assumed that death marked the separation of the body and soul. 
They believed that even after someone died, their soul still existed and stayed closely linked to the community they were part of when alive. They consider the ancestor soul can still have a significant impact on the events in the human world. This belief made the burial of the passed away members a highly important event, and different ethnic groups had different ways of doing it based on their living environment. Agricultural societies bury their dead in the ground. Nomadic groups choose cremation, while the poor people. Who lived among the rivers and gorges choose to place their coffins on the cliff walls. This is about how she went. Oh. This is what? 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 This is 两千多年前他就去了一个小类 This right next to me is the coffin the archaeologist took from the cliff. They found some human bones and burial articles in the coffin, giving us lots of information as in the uh, ethnic origin of the body and the age of the skeleton, which is the poor people over 2000 years ago. It's hollow inside of this coffin with this kind of curved lid and a rough outside. The shape looks like a wooden boat. The coffin is over there in the cracks of this cliff face. Each coffin here is unique because it's made from a single block of wood, which is Nanmu, a type of very expensive wood. They are usually used to build temples, royal temples, and some palace in the old days. It's quite a durable building material. In July 1980, archaeologists safely landing the coffin closest to the ground, labeling it as coffin number 18 as we see here today. Coffin was made of Nanmu and weighed over 200 kilograms. Inside the coffin are two skeletons, a teenage boy and a girl. Apart from the Jinchuba area, there are over 30 other cliff coffin spots in the Wuxi region. These cliff coffins are placed on the rock walls using different methods. Some utilize the natural shapes of rock surface by placing coffins inside the cracks while others involve manually carved caves for coffin placement, and some others are placed on wooden beams fixed to the cliff surface. Archaeologists also found the co-burial of two adult skeletons, one male aged about 26 to 28 years old, and one female aged around 40 years old. Alongside the skeletons, they found a brown sword and a bone-carved belt buckle. These offer us a glimpse into the customs and beliefs of Asian civilizations once thrived in the Wuxi region. I can't imagine how they made this. I mean, put the coffin 
right in the middle of this cliff given the terrain like this it's high steep and crumbly those people at that time managed to scale the height putting a huge weight coughing around 500 pounds up in the cliff face it's quite difficult and dangerous unthinkable why did the poor people bury their dead up in the cliff face a practical need for them is to protect their coffin from wars or being defiled by enemies and wild animals so they put their coffins up in the cliff out of reach for safety another reason or another saying is much more romantic and spiritual the poor people believe that after their death the soul the human soul will rise up to heaven and they view the mountains here as a stairway to the heaven so to make this journey easier they put their coffin high up in the cliff face so the soul will be closer to the final destination oh. In this part of history, the available records are limited, and the stories told by locals are often incomplete. The exact methods used by poor people to place hand coffins on cliff walls remain somewhat speculative. However, based on archaeological evidence and studies of similar ancient burial practices, several possible techniques have been proposed. In the way of manual labor, they probably have created the zhan dao, which is some narrow footway perched on packs, winding up the cliff or built wooden scaffolding. Then skilled climbers would have climbed the rugged cliffs and maneuvered the coffins into place using ropes. Another method was to send some people up the cliff first, and simple rope and pulley systems could have been employed to hoist the coffins up the cliff face. Some also says poor people waited until the rivers were so high. People would row boats over and the coffin just float up. Then they used the scaffolding to place the coffin. Except the spiritual and practical reasons of placing coffins high up in the cliff. There are some other sayings connected to the lives and beliefs of ancient people. The landscape here may have influenced their choice. Poor people lived in caves along the river for a long time. After death, their dead body were also back to where they had lived, symbolizing their unique identity and connection to the land. Another theory is a tradition passed down through generations as a way to honor their ancestors. The higher the coffin is placed, the more it shows the respect of the descendants. at the foot of the mountain and hanging coffin of poor people is right in the middle of this cliff face above me. This road is for transporting salt at that time, which is how the people make a living back then. Making salt here because of the natural salt spring flowing down from the mountain and transporting those salt to other places by walking on this road. After they die, the poor people choose to bury on this ravine. Over 4,000 years ago, this place was known as the Wuxian country. 
the earliest Asian tribe documented in the Three Gorges region for its dominance in salt production. Because of the natural salt springs, Wuxi once thrived economically and culturally. The wizard who controlled the secret of salt production here created primitive beliefs about the souls of the dead. Today, the Wuxian country has long vanished, leaving only the evidence of their existence hanging on the steep cliffs, and all their beliefs are just blowing in the wind. Hanging coffins, dead bodies, burial articles, all these elements build a sneak preview into the lives of the Asian poor people. They treated the dead as if they were still alive, believing they could continue their daily routines in the afterlife. Wearing clothes, jewelry, and even eating and drinking, their families held grand ceremonies, singing songs, dancing around bonfires, and calling out to the spirits of the dead. And they placed their treasures in the coffins, hoping they would be useful in the next life. It was a funeral without tears, only relief and good wishes, a farewell filled with blessing instead of sorrow. The poor people were born here, lived here, and ultimately found their eternal rest here. Though they may no longer be recognized among the crowds, their remarkable legacy can always be honored by us.